Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be a quick video, hopefully. Um, one reason I want to make it quick is because I, you know, I sort of want to try to challenge myself into making a, um, a, a, a quick video. But of course, another reason why I want to make it quick is because my phone right now has only 10% battery. And if the battery goes down um, more, then my recording is going to be terminated <laughs> right away. And that is always awful. So I'm going to stop saying all of these fluff things. I'm going to start with the book. And this is The Core of the Sun by Johanna Sinisalo. Uh, this book was originally um, written in Finnish and was translated into the English by Lola Rogers. And this book is part of the my TBR stack that I um, designated for Women in Translation Month in August. I ended up not reading a lot, but then again, to be fair, in August I only read like, I only finished like four books, so... Uh, yeah, I think it's fair. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read all of those books uh, later anyway, so it's all fun. But you know what else is fun? This book. <laughs> this book is wonderful. Um, I gave it five stars because it is that good. Um, I actually had a little bit of skepticism about this book because um, it. You know, it is a science fiction, and I usually am not really super familiar with science fiction and all that. And I really love the way that world building is done in this book. It's really clear. You can get a real sense of what the dis you know the dystopia that is portrayed in this book, the dystopia, which is a version of Finland, where women are highly, highly controlled. Uh, basically, women are designated to be the reproductive tools in the society. You can sort of um, relate that with what happens in the, you know, The Handmaid's Tale. If you have read that book, there is, you know, there is a lot of elements of The Handmaid's Tale in this book, um, or at least that's what I'm constantly reminded of when I was reading this. But this book is also its own thing. It has its own tone, which is interesting to say the least. Um, now, even though this book is a dystopia and it is set in a really highly dis you know dysfunctional society, uh, the main thing, the main core of this book is not exactly about the dystopia itself. Of course, it has a lot of social commentary as well, but the main storyline in this book involves a woman who is searching for her um, younger sister who has mysteriously gone missing. And the thing is, this woman is finding it really difficult to find her sister because she lives in a society where women are not protected. And so her efforts in finding her sister is just really, really difficult because people are not helping her. People generally, especially the authority, don't really care that um, a woman has gone missing in the society. And so um, basically what we are seeing in the plot of this book is we follow this woman. Her name is Vanna or Vera. Um, and how she is kind of like uh, under there's a lot of you know a lot of distress and hopelessness, helplessness, despair in finding her sister in a society where women are just basically treated as tools. So that is the main thread in this book. It it it's basically deal with a lot of that um, kind of. Um, siblings relationship and we also see how Vanna reflects on her relationship with her sister before her sister got missing and uh, what are the things you know what were the things that happened prior to the disappearance of the sister so that's one layer of it now another layer of this book is that we see there is a chili <laughs> on the cover of this book so that says a lot now, one thing that happens in this dystopia version of Finland is that chili are, you know, chilies or peppers are prohibited. They are treated as drugs. 
um, dangerous drugs. And so, because Vera or Vanna, um, because she is, um, you know, under a lot of stress, she is under a lot of, uh, a lot of anguish, right, uh, over her sister. She sort of develops some kind of depression, and she turns to Chili to get a to get a fix of uh, of certain high. She becomes addicted to Chili, and so. Um, in her efforts to find her sister, now she also has, you know, another layer of complications in her life. She has to mask her addiction. She has to hide it from the authority. And the addiction element in this book actually leads to another plot line, which feels sort of separate from, um, from the main thread of, you know, a uh, sister looking for her younger sister, sort of uh, plot line. And that plot line is actually uh, where Vera or Vanna ends up encountering a religious cult whose main objective is to create the hottest chili ever. And because she is an addict, naturally she gets into this whole thing and uh, you know i i just kind of want to say that the the whole portrayal of cults in this book is not particularly sinister in fact that is probably the least sinister part of this book i mean we're talking about a dystopian government <laughs> a dystopian government that bans chilies there's nothing more sinister than a government that bans chilies guys no curries no life anyway the subplot involving this religious cult feels really ridiculous. It feels really absurd that it, you know, basically just talking about it like this, it makes it feel kind of, uh, there is a difference in tone between the missing sister plotline and also the religious cult plotline. But I find that these two things, despite their differences in tone, actually works very well because the chilly side of this book, it, you know, it is the, the, the side that feels kind of light, feels kind of funny. And when you think about it, chili is being used by the main protagonist in order to, to cope with her despair, with her depression. Um, and so it kind of makes sense to me. And I think maybe because of the writing also, that the writing is quite good. And maybe that's why uh, it feels like it all fits well together. So yeah, um, that's, uh, that's the plot line of this book. Now, um, I mentioned something about the world building just now, how the world building is really good. And I think that also has something to do with the way this book is written. Um, basically... Uh, different chapters of this book take on uh, different formats and as you know or maybe you don't but I love books that really plays with form and um, so you can totally see like a lot of um, uh, kind of like different chapters are written in different formats like certain chapters are written as um, interview uh, transcripts and then you can also see poems, folk songs, you can also see um, uh, magazine excerpts, uh, non-fiction excerpts as well in here and you can see letters also. So different kinds of formats which gives us a glimpse into the dystopian version of Finland that is portrayed in here and it makes it feel really clear, makes it feel uh, like we're there. And I like it. I feel that that is really um, effective. It really reminds me of uh, Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness, like how different chapters um, have different feel, different voices, different style, like certain chapters are written as anthropological notes, certain chapters are folk stories, certain chapters are traditional narratives, and you know, stuff like that. If you're familiar with that book, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I think the world building is done really wonderfully here. 
Okay, so one last thing. If you have noticed, I mentioned that the protagonist's name is, um, you know, the protagonist's name are, you know, she has two names, Vera or Vanna. Okay, so basically those are her two names. And what happens in this book, which is another layer that contributes to the complications in the plotline, is that, um, you know, remember I said that society, um, in this society here, uh, women are really controlled. Well, basically, women who are really groomed to become sex, uh, uh, sex partners for men, um, their names are changed. So they might be born with a different name, but after they are identified and turned into uh, these, um, these trained into these submissive women, which are called Eloys in the book, their names are turned into something with Anna at the back. So it becomes, you know, Vera what becomes Vanna, and Vera's sister, Mira, becomes Manna. And of course, there are also women in the society that don't really fit that whole assignment. And these are the women that show signs of non-femininity as a child. And these, these women as girls would be segregated and then have their reproductive organs ripped off. Now you see how dark the society is. And these women are termed as Morlock. Now, what happens with Vera or Vanna is that as a child, she actually exhibited non-feminine uh, non characteristics. However, she was able to avert that, um, that fate of becoming a Morlock because she pretends to be a feminine girl. That way, she is able to stay with her sister as long as she could and prevent herself from being uh, taken away and have her reproductive system, um, you know, ripped off. And that basically adds on to another layer of complexity in this novel and to the character also because throughout her existence, she has to mask who she is as a person. She is someone who is non-feminine uh, uh, or rather not traditionally feminine and uh, she has to pretend to be uh, a version of a person that uh, is more acceptable in her society right? the kind of femininity that is more um, acceptable in her society and weighs on her it also contributes to her mental condition in the book it contributes to the difficulties in her finding her sister because she has to pretend a lot and it also contributes to her addiction, which sort of leads to the chili plotline as well. So it's kind of like a, a, a connective tissue that um, connects a lot of the different threads in this book also. And I find that is, you know, that being done and, you know, be, being written really well in the book. And yeah, it's just a really, really lovely kind of like, I would I would sort of liken it to a lovely tapestry being being made <laughs> with all of these different elements together and they all just fit really well. So um yeah, wonderful character, um uh, wonderful portrayals of character, really complex characters, wonderful stories as well, and I really love the tone, I really love the writing style, the play with the forms and yeah, maybe that's why I gave it five stars. It has a lot of um, characteristics that I usually find with books that I would enjoy. So yeah, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to recommend this book again <laughs> if, if you have not read this. And um, yeah, I really love the ending, by the way, if you have read this book. Maybe we can talk about the ending, maybe in the comments or uh, in some of the channels. I have my links down in the description box below. <clears throat> but in any case, if you have not read this book, if you are interested, anything you want to comment down below, just feel free to 
comment and I'll end this video right now and I'll see you again in a different one so until then take care thanks for watching and it turns out that my video has not you know my recording has not been terminated <laughs> so yeah see ya bye